Hello everyone. It's um thanks for coming. I'm not sure how many people are here in this room, so I can't really see anyone. So I suppose everything is started right now. So I'm going to do the demo right now. Um, so if you have any questions, um, just uh, raise. Um, I just put in a question in a in a in a pool, so I will answer the question later. So, uh, so next twenty minutes, I'm going to show you how to build the bootstrap in in uh, Drupal eight. So my name is E. So um, this session doesn't sounds very interesting. Who want to actually build a bootstrap? Uh, right now in Drupal 8, but let's go in. So about myself, I live in Canberra and have been worked for a couple of government agencies and I work for work on multiple Drupal projects from seven to eight. Apparently I'm working for ABS uh, as developer. Today I'm going to wear front end developers hat for this presentation. I have a I'm not really on I'm not really on the top of the fountain, so don't show me very hard a question in the end. So, yeah. So about the presentation. So this is just a bit of a background about this presentation. I think I put it words here just saying because we're in a Drupal gal, so we we're in a government space meeting. So I want to imagine you could have a similar situation in one of your project. Everything is running perfectly, but just need a responsive scene as a project delivery success point. But also as a developer, you're always thinking, how can I pick up a proper solution for fill up this missing part? I'll uh, put the images here, just try to get some laughing. But anyway, so let's go in. What bootstrap? So I think bootstrap is still popular, popular though, and um, easy to pick up and well documented. So so I think I'm trying to say it's bootstrap is not a very bad solution for now. I mean, uh, right now bootstrap four, yeah. So there's two outstanding bootstrap thing in Drupal org. So one is Redix, other one is Bootstrap Storybook. So Redix been there for a while. It got a huge uh, usages, um, but Bootstrap Storybook is uh, just started recently. I I'm not sure how, what time it just started, but it looks very young to me. Um, so this topic, this presentation I'm going to show you is only talk about Bootstrap Storybook. So, um, so Bootstrap Storybook book is actually upgraded radical version. So, but it's put other couple of things in there. So let's just jump into this Bootstrap Storybook thing. Um, so it uses Laravel Mix. Uh, it's actually uh, an easy wrapper for Webpack. So I, I hope everyone sitting here is actually pretty good with Fountain so that exactly know what I'm talking about. So I'm just give a, a general introduction for uh, Laravel Mix. It's, you got a browser sync. It, it could automate compile the CSS JS for you. The good things also is can shipping components from one location to other location. The heaps of goodies in there. So you could use post CSS and a critical CSS versioning come from the box you can just um, use that as the package from the package so uh, the length of couple slides um, is gonna just do a script dump for you guys I'm sorry for that because um, it's uh, I probably don't want to do live demo so that's just gonna be a, a couple of dummy um, uh, screenshots and to get it into this um, bootstrap storybook theme. Um, so first, uh, so if you're looking to to the um, uh, seeming website in a Drupal.org, you get all information as you can get from there. So easy to installation. So once you finish your installation, so first part you jump into here is uh, I'm trying to show you is package JSON. So um, as you can see is so there's a couple of wrappers here. So top five command is actually come from a Laravel mix. 
it's come from box. The 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 bottom five command is actually it just developers um, came and wrap it in there. So basically, you can for as your developer, you could actually wrap anything any NPN command in in this section. So the second section is talk about is actually about packaging installed into the theme. So it, it, it's actually my uh, work version. So the default one is all come to the dev dependencies. So my work version is actually I, I separate this into two sections. So with two sections separates, you can easily shipping only everything you want when you try to deliver it or, sh or, or shipping all your code to apps environment, such as production. So I guess um, for me, it's just a better practice. So the this is just show you um, when you install when you install a thing, you get um, package.json, you also get a webpack mix.js. So what's happening here, you can wrap your command or any event command here. So this example just tell you is basically um, compile the, your your components uh, section to a set session eventually by using npm run watch or npm compile stuff like that. So yeah, basically just a example. Uh, so the main part of this thing is components. So basically, components been there for a while. Um, so for all the front end developers that knows exactly components does. So I guess um, um, in this screenshot, I'm just going to show you in, in in your left side in, in the, this here, this this section just tells you you can actually put your components um, in a one folder. So uh, boost, uh, Bootstrap Storybook will do this thing. We're gonna do everything automatically for you if you wrap and everything into one folder. So components. So um, second, this part is just gonna show you because everything is already written in the thing. So basically, use hook library info build. Actually, what this function does is everything you put into assets folder, assets components folder, you will automatically load to the um, your website. So you don't need to worry too much to write actually your custom CSS or JS location in in library um, YAML file. So they will it is actually automatically loaded to your website. So that's cool things I'm trying to um, introduce. So the final part is actually with um, Bootstrap Storybook, it's actually got actual things called a storybook. So that's the exciting part. You basically get a um, actual building start guard. So what happening, you can play everything, every components in this canvas, and then eventually will wrap into the website. So how cool is that? So that's pretty much how I kind of, I was very enjoying doing these same things. And I, I feel like very excited. So let's go to into everything behind these things. Um, so there's no more. Um, yep. Oh yeah. So um, this this slide just tells you how you wrap things behind the scenes. So basically, for example, you want to write your customer customer um, button. So. Uh, you basically wrap your everything in your um, in your SAS file. So it's, that's actually SAS. Um, you can say it's actually extended bootstrap SAS, but um, but then you you wrap with button .js, You wrap with button trick file, and eventually you write your story .js, and then will automatically show your show to the bootstrap uh, storybook uh, storybook um, UI. So this uh, this is just an example tells you you can write your simple. Uh, story, story, yes. What happening? You just need to, yeah. So basically, um, you, you import your button trick file, and you actually import a Drupal attribute. So it's actually in 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 a in a in a code base already. So you can just copy and then paste and then write something you kind of like it, and you that will automatically show to um, Storybook UI. 
The other thing, good thing is actually with this uh, design, with this thing, you actually can write your native uh, JS. You don't need to about worry about the Drupal behaviors. So in this case, you can write a jQuery native JS. That's that's actually just uh, navy bytes like a book menu um, button. So you wrap it in this way, and this this um, this thing going automatically wrap this thing in a in a Drupal behavior. Uh, JS is so as a front end developer, you don't need to worry too much about Drupal. So I think uh, the previous couple of slides, I just try to show you what's exact what's exactly things behind it now. I'm um, come back to this uh, developer use case. So um, the best practice from from this thing is actually write a component. Uh, even a Drupal layout in a in a source folder, so which include tweaks, such action JS, uh, native action JS. What you, what it, what's kind of any JS you could write um, into there. So it will um, then if you like if you like you can wrap it with stories.js, and then you will show it, it will automatically show an, an a story canvas as a as a star guard. Um, then you use um, Laravel Mix and um, Storybook JS will compile it in an assets folder, and Drupal will automatically load it to the side. That's actually kind of workflow in this thing. They try to encourage you to do this way. Um, so let's just do a recap for this. What I have done for the last couple of minutes. So. Um, Bootstrap Storybook is a fully component-based approach. Everything in Bootstrap Storybook is in a component folder, and all the template template files are included in a component. This is not the case in Redix. Um, because of full components driven, the style of um, JS um, necessary for each component is handled into its own component folder. So let's just say if, if you are a, want to add a a button component to your page, you load all the necessary CSS and JS by just to include the component. And there's the whole thing is where organize, organize the file structure. It, ma it makes much more sense during the development process. It's also much easier to extend the thing by installing node packages as the as the front end develop development skills because it's totally isolated from Drupal. So you basically can install everything you like. Finally, it, it integrates with uh, Storybook. Um, so some feedbacks for me, because I have been used to um, this thing for a while, uh, actually just for a couple of months. The positive uh, feedback from me is uh, I'm actually from backend developer. Um, so from backend developer uh, perspective, this thing is much more easy to easy to spin up a, a responsive thing. I also like the thing file structure. It, it makes more sense to have a, a constraint, not leave the code in everywhere. Other thing is, because all the static CSS and JS are all automatically built, you could easily integrate with any of automation pipelines. So in case, in, like in, for instance, if you have already have a pipeline, you can just do this in your script. Um, also, because of reversing reversing engineering from me, like if I'm I'm start doing this and I'm thinking backwards, um, I think this setting up and there's a file structure, um, and all kind of workflow is actually suits any Drupal thing building process. Um, you could have started from scratch and from other front end framework or even not framework. Yeah, so the design still works. Uh, some of uh, um, yeah, so some of the net um, yeah backslash from me is I feel like you know when I start doing front end development, I feel like somehow um, yeah, so node packages still take lots of space, and if you're running a small instance, a small um, container to do a front end development, so you kind of have to juggle a little bit. And the uh, Bootstrap Storybook thing is still an active development. Development. So basically, what happening? Yeah, if you use, use that, create a sub thing. If the parent parent thing has been updated, you 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 kind of have to keep your eyes on that. 
So the latest um, Bootstrap Storybook might have issue beyond Node 12. So make sure you use Node uh, version 12. And there's also like me have I I, I have it. So I still spend some time to put everything together. So I think that's it. Thank you guys for coming. And um, I think for the short short um, time frame, I only can do this. So if you have any questions, just should ask me. And that's all from me. And uh, that's my handle in dribble.org. So if you have any question, ping me from there. So that's it. Thank you. Any questions or Oh, thank you. Thanks. Uh, yeah. yeah, so everyone have, have a question you want to sue to me? Oh, thanks. Thanks, Alexi. Um, yeah, I'm trying to actually make the presentation shorter than 20 minutes. Um, yeah, I'm trying to avoid to do a um, live presentation, but um, I've been playing this thing for a while. So if you guys have any question that you can pay me afterwards um, or yeah just uh, raise questions um, in the drip.org um, apparently I'm actually they put me as a maintainer right now so um, yeah but I kind of get inspired by this thing so um, yeah oh thank you thanks <laughs> all right all right <laughs> Uh, no more technical questions. Uh, how you upgrade new version of Bootstrap? All oh, right, what you mean new version? Uh, new version uh, uh, Bootstrap five is on the track. But I'm guessing, I'm guessing um, the the developer, this guy, uh, mainly developed this uh, Bootstrap storybook thing, is a uh, main person. He told me is he's going to on on a track or or thinking upgrade to Bootstrap five five, but so far Bootstrap four is still good to to go, but I think eventually. But I think you can try by yourself because basically I already told you is um if you get your right to into in in a in a file structure you basically can do everything you like. I think you just need to spend some time to put everything together, but um. Oh yeah, so it's actually Bootstrap for what version right now. You can just try it out. Yeah. So it's Bootstrap for for. Um, I have been used. I have used this for my work. Um, yeah, everything turned out is pretty good. Right. All right. Um. Is is a you can can everyone see my slides? Was it when I when I did my presentation? The slides was all right. <laughs> okay, I think the session going to finish. So, all right, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Someone just told me they can't really see the uh, the slides. All right, thank you for coming. Uh, you guys have a good time. <laughs>